Hi folks, so I'm back today and I'm going to tell you how to make the little tiny hat for Humpkin. So here we go, make his little hat today and show you how to do the face embroidery. And then that will be all the little bits of detail you need to finish off your Humpkin and uh, you'll have your own little friend for Halloween like this. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna make Humpkin's little beret, his little pumpkin beret, which is very simple. It's just starting off as you did to make, um, make the top of his head. So you start off with your orange and you make a magic ring and you chain one. To secure it and then oh, then you are doing six single crochets into the loop so that's two three four five six Okay, and then I'm just going to pull on the thread pull on the thread and we've got our little circle and especially with small things rather than a stitch marker to mark the rounds and I usually cut a piece of contrasting thread um, because I find it a lot easier when you're doing a small piece of amigurumi to use the contrast thread because stitch markers tend to waggle about and get in the way. Um, so we're doing the amigurumi method of continuous round. So I'm going back into that stitch and there you can see I've gone over the top of my thread that marks the end of the round. And I'm now going to do two single crochets in each hole. Okay, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I've increased from six to 12 and now you just fold it over in front of you so you just keep going like that folding it backwards and forwards across your work and you'll never lose your place again it's brilliant okay so now we're going to do one single crochet and then two in the next one so we're increasing again so one and two in the next one in the next two in the next one single crochet two in the next one and two oh look we've got one more repeat there okay one single crochet and two in the next so now we've gone back up to 18 stitches and we're going to have one more round of increase so this time we're going to do two single crochet and one increase so that's two in the same stitch okay so one two and increase one two and increase one two and increase one two and increase nearly there one two increase so now we've got 24 stitches. Okay, um, I'm just going to pull this middle thread out. Okay, make it easier when I tighten it up. 
and again we're gonna put our marking thread over like that and then carry on and this time we're just going to do two single uh two rounds of single crochet in each stitch okay so here we go all the way around <laughs> Okay, so that's one round and I'm just going to do another round of this and meet you back here. So now we've done the two rounds of single crochet in each stitch and we're back to the start again and as you can see it started to make it into a little sort of dome shape. So by doing those two rounds without increasing you've started to make some shaping. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue that, but now we are going to start de decreasing and we're just kind of reversing what we just did. So we're going to do the round two single crochets and we're going to do an invisible decrease, which is just going in the two front loops like this and oh, working. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, going under the two first two front loops like that, pulling up a loop and finishing the stitch. Okay, so then we're going two single crochet and invisible decrease, which is in the front loops only. Pull your loop through and finish the stitch. So here we go, our two single crochets. One more time, I'll show you the invisible decrease just in the front loops only in the round pull up your loop and finish the stitch and we just keep going like that with the two single crochets and the invisible decrease all the way around try and remember what I'm doing while I'm talking <laughs> um, here we go one more decrease and then it looks like the last repeat here so the two single crochets and the decrease okay so there we go back to the start and as you can see now it's really started to curl it back round and under so it's making the perfect little beret shape so i was thinking you know perhaps you could have a bigger hat if you wanted to do that you'd just carry on increasing for another round do the two rounds of the single crochet in each one and then decrease the reverse of what you've just done. So for those of you who are a bit more experienced, you could do that. I think you'd look quite good with a really big um, pumpkin hat on. But um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to stick to the one that I did, which is sticking at the 24 stitch round and then coming back in. OK, so the next one is again, we're doing the reverse of what we did on the increase okay so I'm folding over my marking stitch you may see that lovely little dotted line there know where we are okay and it's just the one uh, single crochet and a decrease in this okay so we're just doing that and we follow that all the way around so one single crochet invisible decrease starts getting a little bit trickier as it's getting smaller now and the stitches are pulling a bit tight so you gotta wiggle it a little bit keep your tension make sure you don't end up with baggy stitches okay so i'm hoping i haven't gone wrong now because i was uh, talking and not necessarily concentrating but we'll see when we get to the end like i said this is mostly unedited so uh, if I go wrong, I go wrong. I can just show you how to repair your mistakes. Okay, so there's the invisible decrease again. <gasps> oh my goodness, wow, I did it. There we go. So one single crochet and the last invisible decrease. Okay, I'm just going to pull that loop up like that just so it doesn't unravel when I show you. Now you can see you've got a little tiny beret. How cute is that? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish off, but I'm going to leave a long thread because I'm going to use that to sew it in. 
Okay, so there we go. That's all done. Now I can pull out my marking stitches. Here we go, like that. And I can reuse that another time. And I'm going to pull this tight here in the middle. And I'm going to sew that down. But I'm actually going to leave the thread and not cut it off. Because again, I can use that to secure my hat on if I want to in a minute. So let's get this done. And we're just going to go back through the round, the starting magic ring. So you're going through some of those stitches there. I'm going to go half the way round and then I'm going to go the other half the way round. Back to the start. So it's nicely secure and then I'm going to poke it through back to the other side so that if I want to use it afterwards I can. If not, I could just snip it off there and tuck it under and no one will see it. OK, so that's that done and we've got our little hat. So here we go. You can see how it comes out. OK, so hat done. Now we need to do the tiny little um, leaf and sprout. So there we go. This is nice and easy, too. So we are starting off with the green this time and we're just going to make a chain stitch six so one two three four five six and then we're going to go and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook so not that one but that one like that and then we are going to do a single crochet and then a half double crochet and then a single crochet and then a slip stitch into the last stitch okay and here we have then our tiny leaf okay it's super super easy and then we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to turn it over and we're going to slip stitch into the back bumps. But I'm going to miss the first one. And I'm going to just slip stitch into those three that are on the back there. And that's just going to give the little stalk um a little bit of substance to help us sew it on and make it kind of stand up okay so you can see there now you've got a sprout and you've got a little leaf and i am just going to actually fasten that off into the first stitch of the leaf as well just to kind of finish off the shape there okay right and then i'm going to pull it through and leave a long bit of thread so you've now got it looks like a little L shape um, and I am going to weave in this end because it's a little bit easier to go up and down the leaf and then I'm going to use this end to sew it to my hat so I'm just weaving in the thread along the edge of the underside of the leaf again I oh whoops looks like I've got caught up there come on let's pull it out again there we go oh it's just caught around there it's okay it's fine there we go so that's now in there I'm going to go back down again just so it doesn't pull out but what I'm going to be very careful about, because I made this nice little point earlier, I don't want that to disappear when I pull the thread. So I'm holding on to that to keep it pointed because it's really easy for the yarn to just kind of pull and tuck that back under if you're not careful when you're weaving things in on small parts. So it's worth paying attention to little details like that just to keep the shape that you've uh, that you've made. OK, so now I've got this other end thread it in and I'm going to try and 
get this to be standing as proud as I can on here. So I'm going to go down over the stitch, through the bottom one here like that, get that ready, poke it in the very centre hole. And let's pull that through. Let's see how it looks. Oh, and by just tugging it tight, you can see it all just stands up. Oh, look, it's so cute. Why am I getting so excited about it? <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. Anyway, things like that really please me <laughs> when it <laughs> sews on and looks nice. Okay, so I'm just going to go back down through that with another stitch just to secure it. And I'm not going to do any more stitching on that because that can just do its own thing. Oh, well, it would if I hadn't have tucked it around there. So, <gasps> dearie me. There we go. Pulled it back out. There. And then I'm just going to secure it on the inside. No one's going to see this, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy. I'm just going to sew around this. A couple of stitches. Oh, I'm actually going to do a knot here. Look, there we go. And if I leave a little bit of a little bit there, then it won't come undone. I haven't got to weave it in because no one's going to see it. Nobody knows. It's all fine. OK, so there's the little hat. And what we would then do is decide where you want it, whether you want it at a little jaunty angle, whether you want it all flat on the top. Maybe you want it over to the front, sort of cutesy covering one eye, maybe something like that. And you're just going to stitch that down carefully catching in one stitch from here and one stitch from here and just do a kind of mattress stitch i think they call it going down under one stitch back up again to the opposite point through the other piece of work along one stitch back out again along back along up like that so that's how it works and that way when you pull it tighter it becomes invisible and you can't see your joins okay so at some point i might do a bit more of a tutorial on that but otherwise just sew it however you want to get it to stay on and look neat so you might have a different way of doing things that's how i normally do it but um you know everyone has their own ways okay so there we go little hat ready for humpkin Oh, look, isn't that adorable? Maybe we could do like a Princess Leia version. Anyway, um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, I will do a little tutorial, which I'm going to tack on the end of this to just show how to do the mouth. Um, but I don't have a humpkin I prepared earlier, so I'm just going to have to go off and make one so that I can show you that in a bit. OK, bye for now. So going to show you how to do the face and uh, also just to note here here's the front loop only row that we've left where we just crocheted into the back loop before that you can attach your pumpkin to when you're doing it so just wanted to point that out there and uh, anyway so here is what you will end up with after day one and then you're going to need to do the details okay so here we have humpkin's body minus the mouth so i'm going to just give you a bit, quick demo of how to do the mouth because um although i've done a little diagram in the pattern um it might be a bit confusing for some people, I don't know. Anyway, you can kind of just do your own thing with the mouth, but some people like to know exactly what to do um, and want to follow the pattern exactly. So I'm just going to show you now. So whenever I start, I always go in from, you know, around the back somewhere. And I come in and I poke the needle through where I want to start, which is just under the eye over sort of a di diagonal about one stitch over and um, so I pull it through and I leave a long tail okay now in most cases you won't even need to sew this in I always leave a long tail so that it's not going to pull out when I'm trying to do the work and um, and yeah I'm going to just show you 
where I've done the stitching. So we are going to have a cute little face. So I'm going to go one stitch down and then so diagonally across to the left and then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, come up in the fifth one here. Okay, so I'm going across and back like that. Now, I'm trying to do this in the least stitch as possible to keep it nice and neat. So I'm going to go and do a back stitch here and then I'm going to come up in the corresponding position just down to the right one stitch to the right of the other eye okay and you can kind of see here how that's going to match so I'll go down like that pull it through and then go back stitch into that now I want to give this like a double layer and I want to try and improve the curve so I'm going into this stitch here that I just just uh, came out from earlier I'm going back into the first stitch position hole and I'm going to pull it through. So now we've got the mouth. If I pull this here, it's looking, it will match it a bit better. Um, tighten it up. And then I'm now going to go right across the top, back into the stitch we've just done. But I'm not going to go back over here. I'm going to come right into the middle, which will be the third stitch in which will be the middle of the mouth and I'm going to come up I'm going to actually come up half like half a stitch here and try and get a little bit nicer sort of curves shape if I can somewhere around there sort of yeah it is quite tricky to go through a non hole if you know what I mean so actually yeah I'm going to go into that one below actually here like that So I'm pulling it through and I'm not going to go too tight. Um, and also I'm just wanting to ad adjust the tension on these stitches here a little bit there because it wasn't matching how I want. OK, so now we've got a mouth. Now you could leave it like that if you wanted, but I'm going to that now go around it. So this is what on my diagram is um, like a little green loop. OK, I don't mean go around with green thread. It was just so that I could show it up a bit. And so you can understand what I was doing. But basically, I'm going around these threads, okay, and back down into the hole that we've just done. And hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to come out over to one side. And this is the bit where it's a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to just, so that's like couching the stitch down like that. Okay. So now I've got my mouth double layer, little bit better on the curve, and I'm going to come back in and couch it down here too, and go back around and down. And I'm going to come out back in this hole again. So we're reusing the same holes we've used before so that we don't create extra lumps and bumps and extra stitches and then I'm going to couch around that one and come back out again to one side just gently pulling it and see how that looks now it's not bad I'm just going to fiddle with the tension a little bit just see if I can improve the shape of that a little bit I realise I'm going off screen there. <sighs> hmm. There. Ah, that was the one I needed to pull. That was not quite how I wanted it. But it's looking a bit better now. Okay, so we've got little mouth. I'll poke the threads around a little bit till I'm happy with how it looks. 
um, and I think that looks quite fun. So I am now going to go back through this and take my needle out somewhere through the stuffing and out the back. Okay, and again, I'm just going to give it a wiggle just to try and hide any notif notice of it. Now, if I was going to give this to a child, I probably wouldn't use these eyes anyway. Um, but I might do a little bit more stitching into this and try and hide the stitches. So I'd probably come out in one of the darker areas and stitch it around a bit. But as this is not going to be intended for anyone who's going to chew it, it's just going to be on display. Those stitches are not really going to come out. So I am going to cut them off. And for this, I just give it a little bit of an extra pull. So it's putting some tension into it and you cut it, ping, and then you can't see it because it's gone and whipped back inside and you can't see it anymore. And here we go. I'm going to do the same with this one. Just pull it a bit tight, plop. There we go. Give it a wiggle. And that's hidden inside. So there we go his cute little smiley face okay so now you've got your face done we need to make his cheeks i nearly forgot about that so the cheeks are super super easy they are literally just one round so we do a magic ring we do the one chain to secure the loop and then we go six one two three, four, five, six, single crochet into the loop, give it a little pull and fasten it off with a slip stitch. So there we go, I'm going to do that. And there you've got a cheek. Oh, little cheeky, cheeky chap. There we go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you just make two of these and stitch them on just underneath the eye. And he'll look super cute. <laughs> there we go. Face done.